Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new month and we thank you for this first Sunday of a new month. We thank you for being with us throughout last month and be with us as we worship together in spirit and truth. Accept our praises and our thanksgiving. Be with us throughout this month, O Lord. Give us relief during this month. Remove all the perils and dangers. Remove our fear. Be present in our midst. Continue to guide us with your mighty hand. Fulfill all your plans and purposes in and through our life. Bless this service. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, we pray. Let us all praise God by singing the hymn 595. God of Almighty Love. Hymn number 595. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know our thoughts and our desires, and no secret is hidden from you. By your Holy Spirit, prepare us now, so that we may love and worship you as we ought. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
the Ten Commandments, God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not make for yourself a graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor your father and your mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not kill Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not bear false witness. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. And you shall not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these your laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us examine ourselves in silence. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and peace with your neighbor, and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, make your humble confession to Almighty God that you may be reconciled anew to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbor. We have walked in darkness rather than in light. We have named the name of Christ but have not departed from iniquity. Have mercy upon us, we ask you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, forgive us all our sins. Cleanse us by your Holy Spirit. Quicken our consciences and enable us to forgive others, that we may henceforth serve you in newness of life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the gracious word of God to all who truly turn to him through Jesus Christ. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is sure and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Almighty God, our merciful Saviour, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who forgive their brothers and sisters, and with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to eternal life through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The collect for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. 
ever active god who has revealed compassion and fullness of life through your son jesus christ and called us to be responsible with the resources available grant that we may be prudent in the management of resources as people who fear god trustworthy and who eat dishonest gain so that in overflowing joy and rich generosity we may be wise stewards of your manifold gifts through jesus christ who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever more amen now we shall listen to the first lesson read you on the name of christ the first lesson is taken from exodus chapter 18 verses 13 to 27 exodus chapter 18 reading from verses 13 the next day moses sat to judge the people and the people stood around moses from morning till evening when moses father in law saw all that he was doing for the people he said what is this that you are doing for the people why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning till evening and moses said to his father in law because the people come to me to enquire of god when they have a dispute they come to me and i decide between one person and another and i make them known the state the statutes of god and his laws moses father in law said to him what you are doing is not good you and the people with you will certainly wear yourself out for the thing is too heavy for you you are not able to do it alone now obey my voice i will give you advice and god be with you you shall represent the people before god and bring the case to god and you shall warn them about the statutes and the laws and make them know the way in which they must walk and what they must do moreover look for able men from all the people men who fear god who are trustworthy and hate a pride a place such men over the people as chiefs of thousands of hundreds of fifties and of tens and let them judge the people at all times every great matter they shall bring to you but any small matter they shall decide themselves so it will be easier for you and they will bear the burden with you if you do this god will direct you you will be able to endure and all this people also will go to the place in peace so moses listened to the voice of his father in law and did all that he had said moses chose able men out of all israel and made them heads over the people chiefs of thousands of hundreds of fifties and of tens and they judged the people at all times any hard case they brought to moses but any small matter they decided themselves then moses let his father in law depart and he went away to his own country here is the first cops gospel praise be to thee o father now we shall listen to the second lesson the epistle reading is taken from 2 corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 to 15 2 corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 to 15 encouragement to give generously we want you to know brothers about the grace of god that has been given among the churches of macedonia for in a severe test of affliction their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part for they gave according to their means as i can testify and beyond their means of their own accord begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints and this not as we expected but they gave themselves first to the lord and then by the will of god to us accordingly we urge titus that as he has had started so he should complete among you this act of grace but as you excel in everything in faith in speech in knowledge in all earnestness and in our love for you 
see that you excel in this act of grace also i say this not as a command but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine for you know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that you by his poverty might become rich and in this matter i give my judgment this benefits you who a year ago started not only to do this work but also to desire to do it so now finish doing it as well so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have for if the readiness is there it is acceptable according to what a person has not agot according to what he does not have for i do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened but that as a matter of fairness your abundance at the present time should supply their need so that their abundance may supply your need that there may be fairness as it is written whoever gathered much had nothing left over and whoever gathered little had no lack here ends the epistle reading praise be to you The gospel lesson is chosen from the gospel according to Saint Matthew, chapter twenty-five, verses from fourteen to thirty. Saint Matthew, chapter twenty-five, verses from fourteen to thirty. The parable of the talents. For it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. to one he gave 5 talents to another 2 to another 1 to each according to his ability then he went away he who had received the 5 talents went at once and traded with them and he made 5 talents more so also he who had the 2 talents made 2 talents more but he who had received the 1 talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money now after a long time the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them and he who had received the five talents came forward bringing five talents more saying master you delivered to me five talents here i have made five talents more his master said to him Well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a little i will set you over much enter into the joy of your master and he also who had the two talents came forward saying master you delivered to me two talents here i have made two talents more his master said to him well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a little i will set you over much enter into the joy of your master he also who had received the one talent came forward saying master i knew you to be a hard man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed so i was afraid and i went and hid your talent in the ground here you have what is yours but his master answered him you wicked and slothful servant you knew that i reap where i have not sown and gather where i scattered no seed then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming i should have received what was my own with interest so take the talent from him and give it to him who has the 10 talents for to every one who has will more be given and he will have an abundance but from the one who has not even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth here ends the gospel lesson praise be to the o christ
Now let us all sing together the hymn 578, a charge to keep. Hymn number 578. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We have just entered into the second part of the year 2020. Today is the first Sunday in July. The topic given to us is stewardship, a beautiful topic. First of all, let us find out the dimensions of stewardship. Stewardship is one of the prominent themes of the Bible. The scripture says a great deal about it because it touches virtually every aspect of our life. What is stewardship? What is the meaning of stewardship? The Greek word for stewardship is oikonomia, 
ஓ ஐ கே ஓ என்ஓ எம்ஐஏ ஆய்கோனோமியா ஃப்ரம் விச் வி டிரைவ் த வேர்ட் எக்கானமி த வேர்ட் மீன்ஸ் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் அ ஹவுஸ் ஹோல்ட் as it refers to the responsibility that is entrusted to a manager a steward acts as an administrator of the affairs and possessions of another person fully accountable to the master and may act justly as did joseph who became potiphar's steward genesis chapter 39 verses from 4 to 6 as christians we have been entrusted with the stewardship the things we call our own are not really ours but god's whatever we enjoy in this world belongs to god we did not bring anything and we cannot take anything back with us we have no possessions god has blessed our efforts and endeavors and we are able to acquire so many things we are able to buy so many things we are able to purchase so many things in order to live in this world but we have no possessions and we do not even own ourselves we belong to god we don't belong to this world of course we have a family we are friends relatives but they cannot hold us back we belong to god everyone belongs to god the third one is the responsibility of stewardship dimensions of stewardship meaning of stewardship and now the responsibility of stewardship according to the scripture we are accountable to god for everything whether we have much or little our key responsibility as the stewards remains the same what is it that is faithfulness in the parable of the talents in matthew chapter 25 verses from 14 to 30 we just now heard as the gospel lesson for this sunday in this parable of the talents the amounts differed but each servant was entrusted with something the rewards were not based on how much they were given but on what they did with what they were given that is very important the rewards were not based on how much they were given was five talents or two talents or one talent whatever it be but the reward were based on what they did with what they were given god has given us talents and what do we do with that here in the parable of the talents the first received five talents the second two talents and they were equally praised what did the master say to the person who brought 10 talents he said in matthew chapter 25 verse 20 and he who had received the five talents came forward bringing five talents more saying master you delivered to me five talents here i have made five talents more his master said to him well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a little i will set you over much enter into the joy of your master he repeated the same words same kind of reward 
the person who brought four talents and here we must resist the temptation to compare ourselves with others because comparison is the basis of all dissatisfaction all of us have been given something and only one thing is important to god faithfulness to what he has given us and called us to do that is what god expects from all of us let us turn to st luke chapter 12 verse 42 st luke chapter 12 verse 42 Peter was asking a question. Peter said, "Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all?" And the Lord said, "Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time?" So, God expects faithfulness from all of us. whether we are much or little then comes the scope of stewardship when the topic of stewardship comes up most people think of only one thing that is money but from a biblical point of view stewardship is all inclusive it touches every area of our life including our time talent as well as our treasure stewardship is faithfully using whatever god gives for his glory for example opportunities skills talents employment family spiritual gifts money so on and so forth stewardship is faithfully using whatever god gives for his glory finally the lifestyle of stewardship the lifestyle of stewardship biblical stewardship involves every facet of life it requires a basic commitment on our part we have a responsibility we must present ourselves to god as his servants with no conditions attached that's a problem with many of us we place conditions before god lord if you do this i will do that for you stewardship requires a basic commitment on our part we must present ourselves to god as his servants with no conditions attached the pattern of our life is shaped by the decisions we make and the greatest of these decisions is this am i the lord of my life am i the master of my life or is god the lord of my life this is the question we have to ask ourselves am i the lord of my life or is god the lord of my life and this is the difference between i will and the great thy will let us turn to isaiah chapter 14 verses 13 and 14 here the prophet speaks about the babylonian kingdom you said in your heart i will ascend to heaven above the stars of god 
I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly. In the far reaches of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. I will. I will ascend. I will do this. I will do that. But what we learn from Jesus is totally different. He taught us a beautiful prayer. We call it Lord's Prayer. There he says, And thy will be done. Thy will be done as it is done in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And then in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prays to the Father. Three times. All alone. He prayed this beautiful prayer. Lord, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, thy will be done. He said this prayer three times. And Apostle Paul used this prayer. And he also prayed three times for the removal of the thorn from his flesh. But God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. And my strength will be made perfect in weakness. And here in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was total silence. And Jesus knew that it was his Father's will that he should accept the cross. Lord, life will be done, nevertheless. Lord, remove this cup from me, nevertheless, thy will be done. Paul prayed, remove this thorn from me. Three times, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. So we have to submit our lives to the will of God. God has a plan for all of us. And God knows how to use all of us for his glory and for the establishment of his kingdom in this world. The kingdom of God was inaugurated by Jesus. But people are standing outside and looking at it. People should enter the kingdom of God. And that's what John the Baptist said. And that's what Jesus said. And that's what the apostles said. And that's what we should say today. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. People are standing outside and staring at the kingdom of God. It was inaugurated by Jesus 2,000 years ago. And first of all, we must become the citizens of the kingdom of God. Then only we can invite others to become citizens of God's kingdom. Unless we say and submit our lives to God, unless we say, Thy will be done, people will not enter into the kingdom of God. People will be still, still standing outside. We have so many onlookers. People are looking at the kingdom of God, how to enter, and through our lifestyle, through our commitment, through our dedication, through our faithfulness, we can challenge the people. And our faithfulness to God and to His will will bring people into the fellowship of God. And it is our responsibility, and that is stewardship. It is all inclusive. It is all inclusive. We have to use all that God has given for us for His glory and for the development of His society. May God bless all of us and help us to act as loyal and faithful stewards all through our life. Amen.
let us profess our faith with the Nicene Creed as found on page number 10. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us all and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we shall have the announcements. I once again greet you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Greetings to all the members of Egmont Wesley Church and Broadway English Wesley Church. I also greet all the members who celebrate the birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. May God bless them and use the masses. Blessings to others. The online Sunday school program is going on well. Please enable your children to join Sunday school from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. every Sunday. And every Friday we have prayer fellowship from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please join in the prayer time. Zoom link and ID will be sent to you every week. A verse a day is sent to you every day. God's word alone can give us great hope and great relief. Continue to pray for our church staff Prabhu and for his parents. We have inaugurated Zoom app and mobile app. Please watch all services and you can have all the contact details and all the information of our church. I like to remind you about Parivalaya. Please Remember Parivalya in your prayers and contribute liberally towards Parivalya Fund. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before your presence seeking your comfort and your guidance. O oh Lord, we thank you 
for enabling us to complete the first part of the year 2020. We faced a very big challenge the past three and a half months, struggling with a deadly and life-threatening virus. You showed your mercy, you showed your grace and your love. We once again rededicate our lives to you at the beginning of the second part of 2020. We pray for the doctors and nurses and all health workers who strive hard and who treat coronavirus infected patients. We pray that you may protect them under your holy wings. We need their service, O oh Lord. We want our doctors and nurses and health workers to treat the patients without any difficulty, without any setback. Give them good health so that they can continue to serve the poor and the sick. We pray for our country, our state, particularly the four districts of Tamil Nadu, Chennai, Chingalpet, Kanjiburam, and Thiruvallur. We commit the people in these four districts. We pray that you will protect all of us We pray for the leaders of our country and the leaders of the world. Let your wisdom prevail over them so that they can take right decisions. And implement all the right decisions for the benefit and welfare of the people. Be with us throughout this month, especially throughout this week. Bless all our efforts and endeavors and give us the joy of coming together as one family to worship you under one roof as before. We pray for the members who will be celebrating the birthdays and wedding anniversary this week. Bless each and every one of them. Fulfill all your plans and purposes. Fulfill all the wishes and desires. We pray for our elders, we pray for our children, we pray for all the families. We commit all of us in your hands, O Lord. Bless us and protect us, guard us and guide us in your way. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, we pray. Let us say the Lord's Prayer in unison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always.
now let us all sing together the hymn 589 go labor on spend and be spent hymn number 589 the lord be with you go in peace to love and serve the lord in the name of christ amen god bless you